Hello guys, I'm Grandmaster Grigov Grigov and today I'm going to make a short lecture about the exchange. So uh, for the purposes of this lecture, I'm going to use uh, the newest feature of modern chess, the so-called uh, strategy booster. So uh, now you can see uh, how uh, our strategy booster looks on the screen. Uh, you have the board and uh, you have um, many topics uh, to choose about. Uh, so and for now uh, you have uh, 25 uh, topics uh, with many exercises uh, in each one of them. Some of them are, are free for everyone. And uh, of course, in order to access uh, some of the topics, you will uh, need um, to be a premium member. Uh, here you can see uh, some different pre um, uh, premium pl plans. But today uh, I want uh, to show how the uh, entire system works and uh, at the same time I would like to give useful information about uh, the exchange. So here we select the exchange as our main topic uh, and we can start the training session so that uh, we can solve uh, some of the positions. But when solving the positions I will uh, try to explain my way of thinking. So uh, we, we can uh, start uh, thinking on the first position. Uh, immediately uh, we can see the neither type of structure and uh, it's black to move. So we should shall try to find uh, the best move. So uh, here in this position, uh, black's uh, more most problematic piece is the f8 bishop because uh, this bishop is restricted by the central pawn structure. At the same time, uh, when we look uh, in, into White's camp, we see that uh, the e3 bishop is very powerful because uh, this bishop will support uh, White's queenside play. And uh, of course, this, this e3 bishop will cover the slightly weakened dark squares around the king. So uh, White has an advantage on the queen side. The d5 pawn uh, provides a space advantage. That's why uh, his uh, future play is mainly based uh, on the advance c5. White will be trying to play on the queen side. So at the same time, uh, Black uh, will try to create a counter chances on the king side uh, because uh, he has pawn majority on the king side. Also, there is this possibility to win even more space by means of h4, sometimes knight h5, knight f4. In order to do so, uh, however, we need uh, to have good control uh, of, of the weakened dark squares. That's why here uh, it makes a lot of sense to exchange the dark square bishops by means of the move bishop h6. So you see the system is playing automatically and here rook take h6. Okay, uh, the, the problem has uh, been solved correctly, but uh, one of the good features um, of this strategy booster is that uh, you can read uh, some comments um, to the game. For example, uh, let's take a look here how the game might continue. A possible continuation would be queen d2, rook h8, bishop d3, so knight d7, a short castle, uh, queen b6, king h1. And here, uh, instead of uh, automatically making a castle, uh, it, it makes a very much sense to go for h4. Well, creating the idea of knight h5, knight g3. You see uh, how important uh, tends to be the control of the dark squares in, in these structures. Uh, at the same time, white's remaining bishop on d3 is completely useless. Uh, I would say that uh, in such kind of positions, uh, when you have two knights against uh, bishop, white squared bishop and knight, uh, you should always be playing on the dark squares because you have some kind of domination on the dark squares. Uh, both knights can control dark squares. Um, whereas only the white knight can control dark squares. So um, you you enjoy a certain kind of domination on the dark squares. And then, uh, okay, you, we have plenty of ideas, knight h5, knight g3, sometimes knight h5, knight f4. Uh, here, uh, those, those of you who want to go even deeper into the position, they can uh, analyze this uh, 
example wine uh, but uh, I would say that uh, black is already doing uh, pretty much okay so let's go to the next uh, problem uh, this this is the position so uh, those of you who want uh, to train uh, together with me can uh, pause the video and uh, can think on their own uh, now we are looking for the best move for black and uh, here uh, there is actually a very um, instructive concept i will now uh, share the answer but first of all i will explain how i think uh, in such positions so uh, whenever you have uh, to make a decision uh, featuring an exchange you should know that uh, you have a critical position and you should think here uh, every serious chess player should evaluate the move bishop a4 because this is uh, a possibility to make an exchange but uh, now uh, probably most of you uh, will say okay uh, our bishop is very strong because uh, these pawns d6 and c5 are placed on dark squares whereas the white bishop uh, is uh, looking like a pawn and in in such cases i will always uh, remember the expression of uh, grandmaster mihai shuba uh, who says uh, bad bishops uh, are are often protecting the good pawns so uh, the b3 bishop might look uh, very passive of course but uh, actually um, thanks to this bishop uh, black cannot attack white's queenside weaknesses and sometimes um, it makes sense to exchange even a bad bishop of your opponent bad piece of your opponent in order to easily attack the weaknesses therefore I think that the move for bishop a4 is pretty logical in this position and you see that after bishop takes a4 rook takes a4 I have easy access uh, to these two weaknesses a2 and c4 okay uh, uh, already uh, uh, in many cases uh, white should be aware of the advanced d5 uh, which uh, would provide black uh, with extra activity so after rook a4 um, let's say uh, rook b1 uh, i think that if already d5 is um, kind of winning because after c takes d5 rook takes d5 we are going to exchange the d2 rook and grab the a2 pawn so uh, this position uh, is already very very uh, favorable for black so uh, if you um, have guessed uh, the move bishop a4 okay this is the correct decision and uh, uh, congratulations probably uh, white should have played the king c3 this is a game by alehim alehim is playing with black and here uh, his opponent should have played uh, king c3 uh, just to, uh, to pr protect the b3 bishop and uh, i think that uh, this position is a uh, pretty decent for uh, white okay uh, black is again uh, better but uh, i'm i think that uh, the position is defendable so uh, let's take a look uh, at another position which is also very instructive once again i uh, invite you uh, to think uh, on this position and uh, after that uh, you will uh, compare your thinking process with my answer so let's try to evaluate the position the, obviously the, this d5 pawn provides white with a space advantage that's why we can say that uh, white is better uh, and uh, another major advantage for white uh, are the weakened is the weakened uh, queen side because black uh, had played b5 and now uh, the c6 square is pretty much weak in this position but how uh, we can make use of it? Uh, white uh, is black is planning to play rook fc8, for example. He can double the rooks uh, on the c file. Many exchanges might happen, and uh, at the end of the day, we know that uh, exchanges are very favorable for the side uh, that lacks space. Uh, at the same time uh, we, we sh should never forget uh, the ideas based on b5 b4 a5 bishop b5 and uh, black is in a very good shape uh, in in the long run uh, black can be even slightly better 
that's why uh, here uh, we we, sh we should find a way to use the weaknesses in black scamp there is a very important rule when you're considering ex an exchange first of all let us ask ourselves uh, is is there any exchange in this position that we should consider of course the move queen d4 uh, so we should evaluate the exchange of the queens and uh, now i want to share a rule of thumb whenever there are many weaknesses in the camp of your opponent usually the exchange of the queens works very well for you because uh, the opponent's queen is a very strong piece and this piece can uh, can cover many weaknesses at once after the exchange uh, it becomes very difficult for our opponent uh, to cover um, the weaknesses so uh, queen d4 is uh, my suggestion and you see that uh, this is the right move and how uh, the game uh, might continue after queen d4 f6 queen takes b6 rook b6 and now knight d4 you see uh, that without uh, queens on the board for black this is it's very difficult to cover c6 and c7 squares now uh, white wants to play f4 followed by knight e6 and also the invasion rook c7 is always in the air let me just uh, show you how uh, this game uh, f continued g5 rook c7 rook d8 now king h2 h6 bishop e4 king f8 f4 knight f7 and here uh, there is a very important move very important moment of course um, uh, we, we would definitely calculate the move uh, knight e6 bishop e6 d takes e6 because uh, we, we have very much the idea to drive his, the opponent's knight to the h8 square but uh, we should always be on alert about uh, some uh, counterplay and uh, in such positions uh, where we have static and long term advantage the be the most important thing is the prophylactic thinking that's why after knight e6 uh, bishop takes e6 d takes e6 black is just in time to play d5 and here um, in order to prevent such a scenario the move is just bishop f3 okay there are many good moves but uh, this decision is very precise and you see that after that uh, everything works and uh, okay that uh, this is almost a stalemate now uh, the game followed in this way you see that black cannot move at all and uh, white can even bring his king all the way to to the queen side so the position is completely winning uh, for white and uh, at the end um, i will uh, show one more instructive example this example comes from the French defense. This is a French type of structure. And uh, now I think that uh, after a serious evaluation, uh, you will uh, solve this position in the right way. So, uh, as always, you can pause the video, think on your own, and then uh, compare your ideas with the way uh, in which I think. So here uh, we have the typically bad French bishop and uh, black's good bishop is the c5 bishop it's obvious that uh, black is planning to complete the development by means of knight e7 knight f5 or knight h6 knight f5 uh, and then uh, he, he has a decent position but here there is a very important exchange that we might consider and the okay the, the most obvious exchange is bishop e3 uh, is it uh, is it a good idea to exchange our dark squared bishop for the bishop of our opponent definitely yes because after uh, exchanging this bishop uh, we will enjoy a typical dark square domination uh, because both our knights can control dark squares and only one black piece can do it that's why here bishop e3 should be played bishop e7 uh, of course black does not want uh, to exchange uh, he wants to play knight h6 knight f5 and here comes another very instructive idea so uh, 
we should never give up uh, so early uh, when uh, we're running after such some position or idea even if uh, it does not work at once uh, we should keep trying and here uh, actually there is a very elegant way of exchanging the dark squared bishops first of all we play queen g3 provoking the g6 move uh, which uh, further weakens the dark squares and now bishop g5 i think that uh, this position uh, is already a considerable advantage for white okay after bishop g5 uh, the game uh, how the game might continue knight h6 for example bishop e7 queen e7 rook c1 knight f5 uh, queen f4 now let's say king f8 knight e2 so in the long run uh, actually we want to exchange also one pair of, of knights uh, by playing knight d4 uh, we should eliminate um, the last remaining black piece that can control the dark squares and then uh, queen and knight uh, will be clearly better than queen and white squared bishop also black should um, recon with our ideas of uh, invading the, the c file so uh, white has a clear strategic advantage in this topic uh, concerning the exchanges uh, there are many many uh, examples that you can solve on your own you can uh, you can go further and develop your understanding um, you see that all the examples are very uh, extensively annotated and uh, this topic is uh, is also free for everyone so i hope uh, you enjoyed my short lecture good luck and see you again